Uh, so these are the words uh, of um, Dwayne Janice, who is the president of the Windsor Professional Firefighters Association. You're searching in the fire on your hands and knees, and the heat is unbearable. Smoke's banked the floor, and you're desperately feeling for the child they said was just inside the door. You answered the call. A young mother holding her lifeless, gray, cold infant shoves the baby into your arms with tears pouring down her cheeks. I'm sorry, speaker. She, she begs you to please save her baby girl. You know it's too late, but you do all that you can. You answered the call. You roll into the neighborhood where the lawns are manicured and the car is shiny and new. You grab your gear and rush to the front door. As you step into the new home, on the floor in the hallway is a most beautiful, blonde, 16-year-old girl with a needle still in her arm. Her parents are crying, trying to comfort each other and saying to you, we were only gone for an hour. You answered the call. You arrive at a modest single-story home. The flames are shooting from every opening in the house. You stretch ho hose lines and ladder the structure. Despite your best efforts, the fire is the victor. You're exhausted and wet and covered in soot. And while packing the rig, the homeowner sits on the curb, face in his hands, sobbing out loud, saying, that's all that I had, and now it's gone. You answered the call. You're standing at roll call at the beginning of shift. Your comrade is missing and not responding to calls and texts. The captain and crew head over to his place and it, as it's just around the corner. While checking the home and peering in the windows, you witness what no one ever wants to see. Your brother is laying on his bed in a pool of blood with the gun in his hand. You empty his locker and question, how can this be? You answered the call. You're 21 years old and fresh on the job. You've heard some of the stories, but experienced none of them yet. You pry open the door to the apartment and the captain walks in. As you search the apartment, the captain calls out, he's over here. You enter the bedroom and the captain tells you to cut him down. As you cut the electrical cord from his neck, the middle-aged man slumps to the ground. You answered the call. You head into the grocery store for grub for the crew. On the way in, an angry citizen calls you lazy and selfish and berates you. You nod and walk away into the store you go. In the vegetable aisle, the clerk rushes over and in a panicked voice says, a woman needs help three aisles over. You rush to her side and begin CPR. You work on her hard, pushing on her chest, hoping to revive her. Forty minutes later, she's pronounced by the EMS. The ride back to the station is quiet as can be as you think about her three kids coming home from school and finding they have a mother no longer. You answered the call. The tractor trailer is fully involved in flames. The screams of the trap driver cut through the dense fog, no doubt a factor in the rear end collision. You jump into action and stretch a hand line and your driver rushes to get you water in time. The screams subside before the water can get there and you know it's too late for the driver in there. You answered the call. You enter the funeral home with your uniform pressed and your shoes all, are all shined and you look your best. A long line of members parade past the casket, another fallen member to cancer. She's much too young to leave this world, and you wonder to yourself as you pass by, how many more of these will you need to attend? Your thoughts are interrupted as you look into the faces of her heartbroken family. You answered the call. You enter the house in a poor neighborhood. They don't have much, and it's apparent they can't make ends meet. As your crew deals with the issue, as you gather information, a three-year-old boy dressed only in his underwear grabs onto your leg and hugs ever so tightly. As you try to leave, you can't pry him away, and he sobs bitterly to take, take him with you as you leave that day. You answered the call. When you arrive on the scene and the 10-year-old boy is frantic and in between deep sobs blurts out something about his grandfather in the backyard, the driver attempts to console the lad while the crew makes its way to the backyard to find Grandpa with the shotgun still in his mouth. You answered the call. You knock on the door of the old gray-haired lady and she yells to come in. As the kitchen, at the kitchen table she waits, it's been three months since your last welfare visit. You ask her all the standard questions about her safety, but she insists on talking about the family she once had. You sit and listen to the stories once again and you think how sad and lonely it must be. You answered the call. You are out with a group out with the group, they're as broken as you and drinking heavily, pretending nothing is wrong. 
Your family is waiting at home for you, and when you show up, you are angry and mean to those who love you the most. You answered the call. It's 3 a.m., you're watching TV, nothing in particular, just trying to fill the void where sleep should be. On comes a commercial you don't know about, and you begin to cry and think, what's wrong with me? You turn the set off and lay in the dark and close your eyes, hoping to fall asleep. Your mind won't shut off. It's like a big screen flashing hundreds of slides of all that you have seen. You answered the call. For decades, these things have been haunting me and my friends. With nowhere to turn for many, it was the end. We finally had the courage to ask for help, and we reached out to you to protect the protectors. We were happy and relieved when we heard the news that someone cared and would help us out. Today, on behalf of myself, my members, and all first responders in this province, I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the members of this legislature who have supported us. You've answered the call. Thank you, Speaker.